What's up guys? Welcome back to AML Films. We out here in the middle of the struggle and look who we out here with. Our girl hey Aubrey. Guys. How you doing Aubrey? Uh, I'm pretty good today. How are you? Hey, thank God for life. We yes, are alive. Yes, yes. That's a good thing. Yep. How you, um, so what's been going on with you? Well, it's getting cold. So, um, and you know, uh, the cops really cracked down on us being under the bridge, like, last night we all, you know, usually they come, they clean, you know, we move out of there, and then, you know, we all, the joke is when they do shift change, we, we go back under there, because it's, and, and the biggest thing is, it seems they don't mess with us as much if we keep it pretty clean, I mean, it's, it wouldn't be that hard for, if everyone just threw their garbage in some bags, but they don't. And uh, so now we're finding, having to find other places to sleep, which is not very easy. And if it rains, that's what I'm worried about. The next time it rains, what are we gonna do? Because they came last night at like 11 at night. We were starting to set up under the bridge and they were like, uh-uh, pack it up, get out. So, yeah, I'm not sure. So well, we was talking a few minutes ago and you said some people got shot around you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, on the Ave. Give us a backstory. How what happened? From what I heard, the, someone tried to rob one of the blocks, and uh, the guy ran right past me with the gun in his hand. Like I was terrified. I'm not going to lie. This is embarrassing. I actually pissed myself a little bit. I thought he was going to shoot me, and jumped in a truck and sped off. And then I came down to the bridge. We were sleeping under there still, and I hear all this screaming. These guys pulled up and started beating like four of my guy friends for no reason just beating on them. And they tried to put one of my friends in the trunk of their car. And apparently that's happening a lot. So just to let y'all know, there's a white SUV going around. They're trying to grab guys and girls and throw them in the trunk of the car. So I don't know. Dangerous out here. Yeah, what, sleeping where? with one eye open always. And what about the, the warehouse? You was telling us about the warehouse? I was told they found like 13 girls, like, I don't know if they were dead or alive or what, but like in this warehouse, like that went missing from around here. Like, so just, I don't know, it's scary. It's it's getting really scary out here. Right, so Aubrey, since you've been out here for a while now, a lot of people don't know about Kensington. A lot of people want to come down here. What are the do's and the don'ts about Kensington? First of all, don't come down here. <laughs> uh, don't travel alone. Uh, especially as a girl, um, you should always have like pepper spray, a knife. I mean, if you want to carry a gun, by all um, whatever. I don't personally. Uh, of course, it's easier. This is the mayor Kenny's words himself. It's easier to get a gun in this state than a license or an ID, which is sad. But um, avoid like side roads. You know, like stay on the well lit path. Travel in numbers. Uh, don't flaunt your money out around I keep even if it's a dollar I keep it in my not even in my pocket now you got to keep your I got robbed actually two nights ago at, at, with a gun the guy was like give me your give me some crack I know you got some crack and he had a work in his hand first like it was a knife and I'm like dude actually I don't I don't have any 
I had just bought like some snacks at the store. I had like a $10 bill and he obviously he saw that. Uh, like when you leave a store, especially if you have any big bill or like, I always just watch my, my back and like kind of try to look around and get a profile of everyone that's in there. You know, cause it's crazy. Like when you see something happen and then someone asks you, what do they look like? How you don't remember, you know, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, like you give a very vague description. Right. But definitely like at night, if you can avoid going anywhere, like for sure. I, my husband doesn't let me go anywhere alone at night anymore. Right. And I got mace and a knife and all that good shit. Yeah. It's dangerous out here. Even with those things, you can still be a victim. And I guess really, it's sad, but don't trust anybody. You can't even trust like who you think are your friends, really. Like, cause I mean, and I get it. I'm not. I've done some dumb, some horrible shit too. I'm not gonna sit here and say like I'm perfect, cause I'm not. Like we're addicts, and people get desperate and will do anything to get that. Gotcha. So you you said your mom has been watching your videos, have so yeah. that Hi, you mom. Been, you been in touch <laughs> with your mom? I talk to my mom. I. It's sad. Every other day, really, I call her to ask for money. Like every other day, and I'm sorry, mom. I always tell her I'm gonna give her a break, and it's it's true. Like I call her like every other day, and first I want to thank my mom because I don't know what I would do without my mom. Like right. when my mom passes away, God forbid, they're probably gonna have to throw me in the hole with my mom. I miss my mother so much. I'm very lucky mm -hmm. that I still have that help from my mother. Of course, she's getting. She's put her foot down before, and I was very proud of her, actually, in the past for, like, she always, like, now she'd be like, no, I'm going to be saying no. She's, and she says, like, she's worried. She says now, like, what I'll do to get, you know, the money. and Yeah, it's tough for your mom, and I'm sure. And I'm an only child, so I can too. imagine how. Right. And so I, she's in South Carolina, and I'm here, and I'm. I'm on the street more than I am at home, and it that puzzles her. Yeah, like you know. So you know we have to get real about the situation that you're in, Aubrey. It's, it's life-threatening, girl. You know, and you know the transformation of you. Oh, we yeah. pray that that you'll find strength. What do you think is is going to take to get you off these drugs, Aubrey? Because you know you're running out of time, love. Oh, every day is a a, a, a gamble. Every uh, get high is a gamble, really. You know, yeah. we don't know what's in this crap. We're, you know, we, we just believe and trust that it is what they tell us. And it's hard. A lot of overdoses are happening to people that I've known for years that are getting that have been getting high for years. I just lost uh, my good friend Ab. His wife just died from an overdose. Uh, rest in peace, T. Um, which I I don't know how he's still. He's gone off the deep end, you know. Yeah. We're just trying to be there for him. Oh, that's nice of you. They have seven kids together, and like, right. I can't imagine. Like, been together since like high school. But you know, you have to be there for yourself more than anything else. And your husband is out here too, and it's difficult. Yeah. Both of you guys are struggling, so. And we've been struggling with our relationship. I think it's on the mend. What is it like being? In, in in a relationship with another addict, the good and the bad? The good, um, let me, I'm not gonna lie, there's probably more bad than there is good. What are the bad? The, the bad is like, people ask me all the time, like, will you have anything in common if you're sober? Because I met him, we were both already addicts. So we've always been on drugs. Um, any clean time he's had, he was locked up, so I wasn't, and when he got out, he immediately came down here and, which I always say, why would you do that? I wouldn't, but I, you know what, I can't say because I've never had that happen. I mean, I can't imagine being in jail on a 23 hour lockdown with one hour out and you don't even really go outside. He said you're in like a box with like some sunlight. Uh, you know, and you're in like a room that's probably as big as where we're sitting with like three other people. That That's just, but um, the good part is like with him, we've done some screwed up stuff to each other. Like I said, like you can't, if I were to be honest, I would tell you that we don't trust each other. We definitely don't. And really with love, you've got to have 
trust. Mm -hmm. um, so of course, I know too when we are ready to go to rehab, which think about it, like people always be like, your husband's ready, like before he was ready to go and I wasn't. And I told him like, look, I love you. Like if you're ready to go, please go. There's nothing more than I want than for him to be, to be clean. All right. And I want us to be clean together, but I know cause I've done it. He hasn't done it. He's never gone to rehab or tried to quit. I've quit cold turkey, I've gone to rehab, like, but you have to want it for yourself. If it was as easy as those that we love wanting it for us, none of us would be on drugs. Right, right. Um, but the, like, so it, codependency, that's a big thing. Like, it's in every relationship with drugs, like, you know, um, but the good thing, is, you know, not many people can say, you know, that their other half slept next to them on the sidewalk every night, no matter what. The good thing is, like, when it is good, like, we split every little thing down the middle. If we, one of us gets a cheeseburger in traffic, we split that thing in half and we both eat it, you know? Right. Um, it's good, like, the good part, I guess, is that I always have somebody That's great. there with me. All right. I couldn't do it without him, really. So, Aubrey, I'm going to give you the phone for you to look at the comments in your video. Don't pay attention to the hate. Only just pay attention. I don't attention. see many hateful comments. I haven't gone through all of them. I remember my first video. I think yeah. I saw one right. out of like 2,000. So I want to say thank you to all of the positive words. I, yeah. I apologize. I don't have a phone right now to, yeah, we know the to situation. get on there. And so every you, time I get one, it's stolen. If you see any name and the person that says something nice about you, can you say their name and, and tell them, you know, read their comment and give them a shout out? You sure. could just do like three. I love these ones where it's like Australia, sending love, happiness, and strength from Jacques Carp and then uh, Louise um, says like, hi, I'm on the other side of the planet. Like, that's just so cool to know, like, there's people all over the world watching this. Like, it, that's crazy. And they're rooting for you. Yeah. Like, and like, well, who am I? Like, I'm just uh, no, a, you a, a dot, like, in the world. But to them, I it, guess. No, you matter, love. It doesn't matter your situation right now. You're still a, a human being. You still have friends and family <laughs> this who one's love you. not really, this is irrelevant, but it says, Mackenzie Lynn says, I'm sorry for my ignorance, but what exactly are they referring to when they say trank? Trank is tranquilizer. They put animal tranquilizer in our dope now. And that's why we're getting all these like holes because we're not supposed to shoot this stuff. Or it doesn't matter now if you shoot it. From the doctor's words, whether you smoke it, snort it, you're gonna get these, these sores. And the only way they're gonna stop is if you stop doing dope. So yeah, trank is tranquilizer. Um, you know, they don't think about it with an animal. They don't shoot that in their vein. They shoot it in their muscle. Even when you muscle, there's stuff. It, so that's what that is. Just it's a little off topic, but awesome. just to let her know. Yeah, that's edu educating <clears throat> the world. And that, my mom, I remember not to upset you, mom. But she's like, you know, they put an animal tranquilizer in that now. I'm like, not to upset you, but that's what we want. That's what we do. Like, and trank actually just to educate you, like, if you do fentanyl with trank in it, that's another a, a withdrawal in itself. So like, if I do some dope. I'm sick with fentanyl and there's no trank, I will still be sick because you have, and the detox from trank, that's the whole problem now is people, they keep making stuff to get people off this and then they put something else in it. So with trank, when you withdraw, it's actually like alcohol withdrawal, you'll, you shake, you'll have a seizure, it's, it's really serious. Yes. Can you it's, read one more positive comment and then say their name? Yeah. Then we'll be closing up. Yeah, you got like 900 and some more I comments. know. People are rooting for you heavy. Even I get hated, so don't pay that no mind. People talk oh, about Oh, this one's me, so. negative. Oh, my God. Yeah, skip the negative. Uh, we'll, wow. We'll pray for them. Yeah, we'll pray for them. Yeah, Bessie, man, I will pray for you. Mm -hmm. Infection yep. all over. God. I'm going to let that, that hate rub off, rub off on us. Uh, this one's simple, but I, I, it says, Lady Chatterley, stay strong. You can do it. Take one step at a time. And that's all it is. One step at a time. Okay, that's great. Oh, my Aubrey. God. These are all. Yeah, that's, that's all I wanted you to read. Just, you know, a few and give them a shout out of the positive ones. We try not to pay attention to the hate. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. 
you know, Aubrey don't have the luxury of using a phone every day, so she appreciate it. She appreciate it when she do get on the positive words that people say. Okay, so Aubrey, we're, we're done with the phone. Yes, please take this you. away from me. <laughs> God, that's terrible. Oh, people are saying some horrible things. Oh, one last thing. Yeah. Aubrey, this one says Kelly Roach. This one's nice. Aubrey, you are such an amazing person. Please get help. You're young and have so much of your life ahead of you. You'll be a great inspiration to so many and could help so many people by getting clean. We're praying for you and we're behind you all the way. You're an amazing young lady. You're good enough and deserve to have a great life. Say that to yourself every day. Thank you. That's really, really nice. Yeah, and that's what we I love. I hear stuff like that all the time, but sometimes just seeing it mm -hmm. like is different. You know, I really, much love from East Tennessee, from Connie. Thank you. I love seeing from the South because I'm <laughs> from the South. Right, right. So, Aubrey, when you, when you look at the world now, right, what change would you like to see happen in the world? I love people not to be so judging, especially if they, like, everyone's situation. I think I said this before, like, like when my husband, for example, his, his mom passed away just before I met him. And a lot of people are out here because their parents passed, and I, I can't imagine. And I, my parents are getting older, and... It terrifies me every day. Like I'm not gonna be there, you know, when my parents pass away, or I'm gonna b die before them. God forbid. God forbid. And um, I'm sorry. I just like drew a blank. Well, oh, the world. What would be? Yeah. Better? Uh huh. Um, what change would you like to see in the world? Just, I, people could just be more understanding and step back and maybe just take the time to talk to people and and. Like you, it's like when you ask us, like, I like when you ask us, like, our favorite color, you know, because mm -hmm. I feel like it makes us, it humanizes us more, like, we're just like everybody else, right. you know. You just got to struggle. You like, know. when I talk to some people that are sober and, like, we have things in common, like, you'd be surprised, they're like, oh my God, like, it's like, yeah, I'm a regular person like you too, I'm just right. fucked up a little, that's all. Right. Aubrey, even though you're going through the struggle, you, do you have any words of motivation you would like to share with people that's watching? Um, what do you like? Yeah, any motivation, any words of motivation you can give to our brothers and sisters who are off drugs and the ones who are coming down this road. Whoa. The ones off drugs, like, you people, you are the ones, like, when I read those comments that are like, Oh, I'd like to help her because someone helped me 23 years ago. I can't imagine being <laughs> clean. Like, I can't imagine, since I was in high school, besides the time I got sober for like nine months, I've never been without any drug like for like 12 years. And I just can't imagine. I'd love to be like, I haven't had any drugs in 12. So you guys motivate me, you know, like that can be me one day. And it, I hope it will be me one day. Amen. We speak that into existence. We would love to see you, those pictures that I went on your face. Like, I'd love to see, you. oh, I know. And I don't know, uh, you know, like someone told me, someone put like something up of me and Spike, like a, an old picture of us in uh -huh. there. Like, oh my God, you know. Yeah. The before, before yes. the struggle. This is show people what you look like before the drugs took over. And yes. you're still a beautiful person. And I'm going to give you a card for you to always hold on to this car because yes. you matter, right? Yes. So I'm gonna give you two bags, one for you and one for your husband, all right? We got Thank some hats you. gloves in there. You can open it up to That's see awesome. what you. it is. So much. Yeah, no doubt, you know, we're here with you. We appreciate all of this mm -hmm. and stuff. Oh my gosh, my favorite stuff in like there. You too. Oh, those work really well. Right? I can imagine. I don't know if there's people, I know people like that are out here that have phones. Yeah. Like, if you have a tent and you layer this over your tent and mm -hmm. then put a tarp, that thing will be like an oven. All right. I have to sit outside in my t-shirt sometimes. Like, those well, work. So what would you like to say to the AML family? Because they're the one who put, send these things and we make them into bags. So that way everybody can get a fair share. Because yeah, people are definitely, and like what I hate is when people take stuff here and they go try to sell it. Like, come the hell on. Yeah. Sorry, God. Right. <laughs> so Aubrey, do you, so, so you do still have hope and that's a good thing, right? 
faith and hope. Right. Yes, that keeps me going. And I'm not time, super religious, but I do pray right. every day. And hey, that's all that matters. Some things happen to me, and I'm just like, there's no other explanation than right. a higher power of something. Exactly. Also, I wanted to share with you one thing that happened to me recently. Uh-huh. Uh, so, I had this Puerto Rican lady and her brother pull up to me on the corner over here. And she calls me over, and I'm like, she goes, your name's Amber, right? She always calls me Amber, and I just have stopped correcting her. It's whatever. I'm Amber to her. That's okay. Uh, she, I said, it's Aubrey. She goes, Aubrey. Right. She goes, I watched your video. It, well, it was very cool. She goes, and you know in the video when he asked you, like, do people, what do people say? Like, and I said, they're mean to you, and it hurts your feelings. I said, yeah. She goes, well, my brother was one of those people. And I looked at him, and I knew exactly what he said to me. I can tell you what the weather was like that day, everything. And, he, and she goes, and I, I brought him down here because he wants to apologize to you. So my video is obviously making some kind of, and I just was like, wow, who can say that? Someone, and he gave me $5, not that I care about the money, but right. like he said, look, I'm sorry. Like, I guess she was watching the video and he just heard my voice. He didn't mm -hmm. see me. So he didn't know it was me and he's like, oh, that's terrible. And she goes, yeah, well, you drive past her every day. And he's like, oh my God, did she, got, did she cut her hair off? And you know, he's, she's like, yeah. Did you don't tell me you said something mean to her? And he, she, he just was all like, and she's like, oh my God, we're taking, we're going down there. to." A, and every time I see them now, they say hi to me. They give me food, they give me money. Like, Beautiful. and I just want to say thank you for that. And I, I just thought that was something I wanted to share. Like, it, that's, it, beautiful, that, that's just crazy. Like, yeah, you're making who can say that? Yeah, you know? you're making the difference. That and meant so uh -huh. much to me. And that's why it's so important for us to speak up. Okay, Arby, you have any last words before we shut down? Uh, again, thank you, everyone, for everything. Uh, I, we are very blessed, really. I, this stuff, oh my gosh, it's crazy. Like, I told you, like, there's got to be no other explanation than, like, we needed these things. Hand warmers and everything, especially. And, I, I just want to say I appreciate the positive comments and the winter time is coming. What's your game plan for the winter, Aubrey? Stay in my apartment. <laughs> oh, that's good. And what's your short-term goals now? Well, um, we're still really trying to get with the clinic, especially with the winter coming up, because money does not come in as fast. You can't stay out. I can't stay out there in the traffic as long. It's too mm -hmm. cold. Right. And we're due for a brutal winter. Mm -hmm. I'm, I've been here for five years, six years, and it hasn't been that bad. Like, I know this one's going to be right. bad. Well, so. we'll pray that you get the strength to continue to stay in your place, and hopefully you'll get on some methadone, some suboxone, or something. That way you won't be out on the streets. All right, love? Yes. You and your husband. So, guys, remember, don't be bitter, be better. Yes. Until next time, we out there. We out there. Yeah, peace out. Thank you.